foremost, just thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, I'll tell you that every week, right? Um, I really appreciate all the coverage. I appreciate all your opinions. Um, there are times I do read every single one of your articles, right? And um, I just appreciate everybody's opinion, right or wrong, or whether I agree or disagree. I appreciate everybody's opinion. I think we have elite media here who care and who want to continue to cover our football team and with all the things you have to cover. So I'll always tell you thank you. It means a lot. There's only so much airspace. There's only so much paper space. Uh, not so much on the Internet, but a lot of space. Uh, but I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, I'm really proud of our football team. We went back and talked for the last uh, week about what did we learn. We drew a line in the sand in the locker room uh, after – uh, our last home game against Michigan State. And I said, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about and learn from the six games prior, and we're going to apply every single thing we've learned to this game. And I thought they pretty much did. It wasn't perfect, but they applied it. And I talked to all of you about that in the press conference, what we learned at Buffalo and Oregon State, Middle Tennessee, Maryland, Purdue, Michigan State. And uh, the biggest thing that I saw was belief all the way through. I saw finish. Right? I saw trust. And I saw a team that knew they were going to win that football game. No matter what, they were going to find a way to win that football game. And it wasn't easy because there was a lot of adversity throughout the football game. But I thought they responded well. I think a few weeks ago, if we play that game, we don't win. I'll be honest with you. I don't think we win. We win that football game because we've learned from our past to create our now. And then we'll create our future. So it's one game. We're 1-0 uh, in the Illini season. You've got to give Coach Smith a lot of credit. He's got a very, very, very young football team. I told all of you this, and uh, I'll say it again. That's what we're going to look like next year in terms of our depth chart uh, with some old upperclassmen mixed in there and stuff like that. But we're going to look really young, um, that he's doing it the right way. He's a class act, a phenomenal football coach. And uh, I, all of you know, I don't have to even say that to him, but um, it was a heck of a football game. Last thing being said, uh, I just want to congratulate. I never really single out players, but... You know, something magical on that field happened today, something spiritual, something of a higher power, whatever you believe in. Um, that was John Selstein. And he's a phenomenal football player. But, um, you know, when you talk about everything he's been through as a, as, as a young student athlete and what he's had to cope with and deal with and be the leader of his family and then have a coaching change and rely on us to be able to be your be the fill-in for your dad. We can never be your dad, but I want to be as close to your dad as I possibly can be. And to have that trust there is, is this is why we coach. That's the moments why we coach. You guys will talk about the wins and losses, and you'll talk about hiring and firing and doing all those things. Why I coach, that's why I coach. That young man is uh, why I come to work every day, to be able to change young people's lives, to be able to be in their lives when they don't have other people to guide them to do elite things in their life. And uh, he's on his way. He's on his way after five games, six games, whatever it is left uh, of doing special things in his life. And uh, you saw the beginning of it tonight. So with that, open up for questions. Larry had another performance where he had over 100 yards and got to the end zone. And he says it twice now for Brooks when he needed to. What does that say about him and his performance? Well, he's going to play more. That's what that means. I think he's earned the right to do that. You have a pair and a spare, but listen, I'm going to continue to put the best players out there. And uh, we'll continue to. I think he's earned more reps. I really do. I really do. I think he has. And, and especially, you know, Rodney went down again today. Uh, you know, Shannon was out this, this week. Chenault was out. Lingen was out. I mean, I didn't talk about that until we got to the game, but that was, you talk about more adverse situations. I told you everybody's going to have to play. Justice Harris played today. Um, they had to take everybody. And um, I, I was really proud of how Kobe put people on his shoulders, literally. And that last touchdown, I mean, that's all want to, how, heart, grit, toughness. And he finished the drive. That was an impressive drive by our offense. I mean, we only ran two plays. And we just went right down the field. But that was a, a statement for me that, okay, uh, we need to go back to what and who we are. We can't beat ourselves, right? And we are beating ourselves at multiple multiple different ways. Let's go back to who we are and uh, give Coach Rock a lot of credit to stick true to the game plan in terms of that and uh, kind of get pretty boring there in that in that long drive. But that's what it took. And I uh, give a lot of credit to him. Chip. I believe in my quarterbacks, you know, uh, I do. I, I believe in them. And, and you can't just, if a kid makes a mistake, remember, these guys that were playing quarterback have never failed at quarterback before. If, if one mistake happens and I pull them, if this was a three, four-year starter and we were making mistake after mistake and it was an off day for him, maybe I wouldn't go back to that. But this is like a lawnmower, man. you got to continue to pull that cord over and over and over until that thing starts. You have no other choice. 
And that's what we did. We came back out, threw the ball. Uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. You come back. But if we complete two passes, we're not talking about that. We don't. And uh, we've got to be able to, again, chop down the game plan even further, even though we have done that a lot. Chop it down even further. And whoever's in the game, run the, these plays and perfect these plays. Well, if juggling two, you know, juggle balls are easy. If you throw a third one in there, that's when it gets a little bit more difficult, right? Uh, but, again, they're very selfless. This is a very selfless backfield. And I expect them to be very selfless. But, again, I think they can all see it. He's played two games, and he's ran for over 100 yards in both. And a lot of his yards come from after contact, you know, five, six yards after contact. Same thing with Rodney, same with Shannon. But, again, it comes down to how many hits do I want Shannon to take? How many hits do I want Rodney to take? How many hits do I want Kobe to take? It comes down to now we're going to have to say, okay, we want this person to have this many carries, this person this many carries. Because, again, you're starting to see what happens when you only have two backs and you count on them in a run game, right? And you haven't developed your wideouts over time yet. They're getting there. They're just not ready yet, right? And to be able to really break out besides number six right now. And uh, people understand that. And that they could do everything they can to take him away. So that's what we're looking at. That's what we're going to probably have to be able to do. When you go back to that third quarter drive that ended in the field goal, and it was all Kobe, all Kobe, and you had no huddle and, and read option, and then bootleg. What was your thought process with some of those, those calls at that time? Well, we had him on the one-yard line, so we hurried up, we, which we usually do. Uh, we caught him. They were pretty much standing up. Um, we pull it, and they kind of fell into it. And, um, uh, and then the next play, we run. Yeah, Kobe. We did the Kobe, Kobe up the middle, and, and we miss a block. Uh, right guard misses a block, and that's what happens. And uh, then you're stuck on third down, right? And, uh, and then, then, then again, it, you could easily. But we love hurry up. Hurry up has been really good to us throughout the year. Just because it doesn't work in that particular instance doesn't mean it's a bad play, right? And, um, you know, that's always, oh, you know, would you have a chance to call that play? I'd call it all over again. That's exactly who we are and what we do. We just didn't execute it. I think a lot of the things we did tonight, we didn't execute at a high level. We got to execute better. Yeah, I mean, how many sacks did we have? Anybody know? Three sacks. But, again, the big thing was they threw in a quarterback that hadn't played a ton before. And they run a lot of toss with him, and they run a lot of counter with him. We had to adopt, we had to, uh, adapt to that. Uh, we had to be able to stop that first and foremost. Then they started throwing the ball with him, which takes you out of certain packages. And then three would come in, and he'd run draw, and then he'd throw the ball. They, they did everything they could to mix it up with the personnel they had to. Right? And that's what you have to do. But if you think you're just going to line up in the Big Ten with, with eight freshmen or with us, five, six freshmen, and to say, we're going to run our offense and have all these plays and be perfect, that, that's not realistic. You've got to continue as a play caller to continue to move people around, continue to mix up the personnel groupings. Um, but they're a really good football team that's really young. That's really young. they got some very, very, very talented football players on that football team that they're only going to get better as you, as you continue to watch them grow. With Kobe's two picks, uh, not Kobe's, but Croft's two picks. Was the first one worse than the second one, or do you not differentiate those? Um, I'll have to go back and look at the film, Andy. Uh, I just see him as picks right now in my mind. I see him as two interceptions. Um, I'll have to go back and film. I'll get back to you on the press conference next week. Before we uh, mention John, um, what else did you like from the linebackers this game? Oh, I, I thought we did a better job of tackling. You know, I thought it took us a while to get into it. You know, what happens is, you know, some of those outside runs, what has to happen, just so everybody knows, is our secondary members have to set the edge, right? So they got to contain right now. That means flying downhill against an offensive tackle that's kicking you out and blow it up. Very difficult thing to do if you're a, a, now a true freshman in your first game to do, right? Or haven't played corner before, and now you're playing corner, and you got to go do that over and over, right? And so I think we were a little hesitant in doing that. It took us a while to get into that, so we broke contain a few times and didn't do it. Then all of a sudden, our linebackers got after them, and psh, they came downhill. Linebackers came downhill. They were fully committing to it. I think we were a little bit tiptoeing a little bit, trying to see it all in front of us instead of just reacting to our job. Um, and I think that was one of the issues when we started to get runs. But after we settled down, we were coming downhill on the perimeter, setting the edge, and then our linebackers were filling and flying to the ball. I thought we did a great job of getting the ball out at different times. Um, you know, but, again, it, was a, it, it, it wasn't a, the best performance by both teams, I bet. But uh, you had to find a way to win that football game, and they did. He's getting better, isn't he? You know, Chip, you're right. He's one of the guys that just every week gets better and better and better. And talk about a guy who played linebacker last year. We moved him to R, which is a glorified 3-4 outside backer. Remember, 
you know, when we first got here, we talked about, okay, well, we're going to, we're a four, three defense, but with the personnel we have, we've got to become a three, four in year one. Okay. I'm not saying that we won't be that in the future, but we probably won't be as much. So to have a guy come in, learn a whole new system, learn a whole new position and now produce at the, the level he's producing. Um, thank goodness we have Carter Coughlin, um, because he's getting better every week. Combination of John's pick six and what that what that shows with what he's overcome. Were there times through this year that you saw him either rally or show something to you about what he's had to overcome this year? Well, absolutely. I think just how hard he plays first and foremost. Then he has the elbow injury, right? And then you watch him last week play with that elbow injury. That was nasty, right? And if you're a linebacker and you have an elbow injury. Right? Very difficult to have a lot of power to come up through people and wrap and roll and, and then if you're, you're and then or, or to bite the ball head on is what we call it and then to be able to wrap and roll from the side and then pull a guy down and then also you have to dive out and sweep an ankle if you're behind and if you have a bum elbow that's very difficult to do and he never complained he never wanted to come out of the game he just kept playing and that's his resolve that's the type of kid he is. That's why even after the tragedy he has, he can continue to get better every week and lead this football team. And he's had to lead the football team because 20 guys, I think it's 20 guys, that 21 that played Buffalo, weren't even playing today or missed time up until then. That's a lot when you're already thin, right, and you're already young and inexperienced. That's a lot. So I see it as a heck of a, heck of a win. You might only see it as our fourth win of the season. Now, that is a heck of a win by a team – uh, that gutted it out and found a way to win. That, that's, that's special. Obi, go ahead, man. How you doing? Doing all right. So, doing a little bit. A lot, a lot of room to improve with Carter here in Provo, but was there also kind of a sense of relief to get the first big win? You know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, wins these days, wins, wins in 2017, wins, wins, wins. They're almost all reliefs at some point. Right? The pressure to win and the pressure that these young people feel with social media and what comes out and what's written about them and what's out there at times. It's hard to be a student athlete in 2017, especially when it's not going good because everybody can say anything they want about you and you can't do anything back. Right? And you watch the resolve they've had and how hard they practice. You ask them when they come in or how tough Tuesday's practice was because I promise you none of them are going to say cakewalk. It was a tough practice, but they had to show me they were willing to draw a line in the sand and say, we learned this. We're 0-0. Zero and zero. We're going to go for 1-0. and oh. And there's going to be change, Coach. There's going to be change of how we do things. Not necessarily we're going to grow to be 6-4 and we're only 6-2, but change how we connect. Everybody's going to be a part of this thing. So I think there's a little bit of relief after every win. Um, are we at a point where we're expecting to win every single week? I, I am. I, I am. Right? I think a lot of our, our t guys on the team are, but some guys that have never played, that are playing, I'm not sure realistically if they think, we're going to win this thing because I'm playing. They're, they're just learning the defense or learning the offense or just lining up in the right position. Right? Get your eyes in just the right spot. It's interesting. I mean, that's why I don't focus on the results so much. Um, it, it's important. It gets you hired, gets you fired. But at the end of the day, that's not why I do it. I do it to teach these young men how to be able to handle success and handle adversity, how to keep your oar in the water all the time. That's what Roll the Boat's all about. Roll the Boat's not when you're 12-0. and 0. I mean, you could talk about it, but it doesn't have that big impact. I mean, roll the boats for when you've lost three in a row. And everybody wants to sink the boat, throw, throw, throw them out of the boat, drill holes in the boat. Listen, I've had the boat for a long time. I've heard it all. And you just keep rowing. We just got to get everybody rowing in the same direction, right, even if they haven't played a lot to continue to trust the process. So, um, you know, I'm happy they uh, found a way to do it tonight. I think there's a lot of excitement in that locker room, though, especially how we won, right, with all the things that could have went wrong and all the things that did go wrong, and uh, especially with John Celestine kind of, you know, finishing off. Well, it's, we're seeing progress. Some of the progress is just lining up right, okay? Some of the progress is making the, the play. Uh, Chenault being out, I mean – and, you know, and then, then Khan gets hurt today, you know. I mean, Keandre's out. And you look out there, and a safety's playing corner, and a red, uh, the broken redshirt freshman first game in there is playing. And then a freshman's in the secondary telling them what to do. Ken Handy Holly. So it is what it is, and that's where we're at. There's no excuses. Everything falls on me. And we've got to continue to recruit. We've got a heck of a 2018 recruiting class together, and I mean a heck of a class. And we're going to finish this year strong. 
and we're going to get that group in here, and then we're going to build the 19, and then we're going to keep building the wave, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, I do want to make one statement to maybe end, right? And I just want to thank our fans. I want to thank everybody who came back for homecoming. I want to thank our alum. I want to thank our student section. They're absolutely elite tonight. I want to thank our band. I want to thank our spirit squads. I want to thank everybody who came today and just came back. I want to thank all the little kids, the future gophers, just for being here. Uh, that was a live environment. It was special. It was unique. Everybody stayed till the end. I think everybody's had to stay till the end because every game we've been in has been close. And I've told everybody in there, we're three minutes and 43 seconds for being 7-0. and We're not. Dumb statement. I know. But we're close. We've been in every single game, and every game we have up to this point has been so close, right down to the wire and the losses we've had. So we've learned how to fail and bounce back. We learned how to fail, and we didn't bounce back. We are gaining so much knowledge for the future of this program. Just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, past, present, future. Row the boat, everybody. Sky Imago Gophers, thank you. Happy homecoming.